Hey folks, welcome back to the Lone Pine Tarot. For today's Pick a Card reading, we have a topic that is perfect for spring, although of course my readings are always timeless. But as you can see by the title down below, that topic is what new things will enter your life soon. So we're actually going to do a two for one message for today. So section one will be one new thing entering your life and section two will be another new thing entering your life. So you're going to kind of get two readings in one for today. But without further ado, let's pick our piles. Pile number one's over here on the left. I have the Coyote and Detura, also known as Moonflower more commonly. This is the subtitle Deceit. For my pile number two is in the middle. I have the Owl and Hop with the subtitle Wisdom. And for my pile number threes, I have the Quail and Gooseberry with the subtitle Anticipation. So just to reiterate, pile number one's Coyote and Datura or Moonflower. Pile number two is the Owl and Hop. And pile number three is the Quail and Gooseberry. So feel free to meditate on these piles, look at them a bit, see which one calls to you. I always recommend to people just to kind of go with what their first gut instinct tells them or whichever one is kind of pulling at your heartstrings a little bit more than the other. Either way, when you are done deciding on what pile you would like read for you today, drop down to the description box down below or the top pin comment in the comment section beneath the video. Click on the timestamp for your reading and I will see you in our discussion about what new things two specifically, will enter your life soon. Bye. Hello there, my lovely pile number ones. Welcome to your pick a card reading today on the topic of what new things will enter your life soon. As we discussed in the intro, of course, this is going to be in two sections. We'll have basically two readings for you. One new thing that will enter your life soon and another new thing that will enter your life soon. So I'm just going to split the piles now. Of course, you recall the card used to pick your pile was the Coyote and Detura or Moonflower with the subtitle Deceit. We'll set him down here to the left next to the pine cone as always. And then, of course, split the oracle cards. So this is reading one, new thing number two. Set those with me for a second. Today we'll be using Lenormand cards as well as tarot, so I'm going to just draw those now. Spirit for my lovely pile number ones for their first new thing that will enter their life soon. Okay, so reading number one for them. Can you give me three Lenormand cards explaining that, please? All right, that one almost flipped out. We'll see. What new energy is coming your way? Okay, that one, this one, and I feel like that one right there. Okay. Thank you, Spirit. And then for the same purposes with tarot, can you give me five cards explaining the same topic? What new thing will enter their life soon? Okay. At least the first one we're talking about. Five cards, please. And today we're using the lovely Ostara tarot, also fantastic for the time of year that this is releasing. But of course, like I said in the intro, my readings are always timeless. So two, let's see, three. Uh, I feel like that one right there, four, and maybe five back there. Here we go. Okay. All right, let's unveil this together, Number or pile number ones, excuse me. So, do, 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 do. we'll look at your oracle cards first. <clears throat> excuse me. So, we have the LK oracle for you, which you received today. She who instigates Regina, leadership, provocation, and power. Okay, she's even got some horns here. Some queenly energy, I believe. Uh, Regina is the... I, I think it's the Latin word for queen, or something like that, like regal. It's probably the same Latin root. So Regina. Okay, and I'm actually going to set her down here to the right. She who instigates. So some powerful energy, okay? Your botanical inspirations flower for today is Red Rose. Hidden Secrets, and we have the quote, Three things cannot be long hidden, the sun, the moon, and the truth. And that was uh, by Buddha, or the Buddha, excuse me. Interesting. Definitely a theme popping out here. Set your red rose up here by your coyote in Datura. And your sacred destiny oracle for this particular part of the reading is Security. Okay, we have the cave. We have a petroglyph here with a, it looks like a mammoth. 
We have the unknown up here and we have the known and security right here. Okay. Uh, definitely themes of truth coming out in some way for sure. Pile number once. Um, that's the feeling I am getting here from this reading for you, but we'll see what else pops out with your other cards. Actually, forgive me. You're always my guinea pigs. <laughs> Pile number ones is the setup. So I'm going to put your Leonard Mod right here. And then your tarot always goes down at the bottom. So your Leonard Mod for today is the stork, the girl, or the child, as it's known in most Lenormand decks, and we have the oak tree, or just the tree, as it's known in most Lenormand decks. So, reading this in a sentence together, uh, the stork normally means delivery of some sort, something being delivered, something being brought to you. Um, the child can mean innocence or naivety or something new. And the tree can either mean family or health. So, reading this in a sentence together, like Lenormand traditionally is depicted or interpreted, right? The delivery of new newness with family or health or growth it can also mean so delivery of youthful growth okay uh could technically uh for those of you who are perhaps expecting this could be a feminine child coming along okay feminine energy because the stork also can mean pregnancy uh, for those, I don't want to scare anyone that's like, oh, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want a baby on the way. But for those of you who are expecting, maybe you don't know the gender of the child yet or the sex of the child yet. Um, feminine energy. Okay. Especially with that family association with the tree. Um, and then the other themes coming out with your other cards have been like a, a truth being revealed. Okay. Uh, perhaps maybe with the coyote card, you thought that the, the sex or the gender of the baby was going to be one thing, but it actually is another. Okay. Uh, we'll see what else pops out though with your tarot cards. Otherwise, if this isn't an interpretation of, you know, as a general reading, everyone's going to be just a bit different. If this is an interpretation of like a baby for you, pile number ones, I would say it could be something to do with new growth in terms of um, like a metaphorical pregnancy, which I know sounds weird, but spiritually I would interpret that as like a new, a new project or something new coming into your life, right? Something new in terms of, uh, like the youthfulness of it, it being like a, a young thing that's being grown or delivered to you and then growing it with that tree. Okay. So yeah, let's look at your tarot cards too before I get too far in the weeds. First up, we have the King of Cups. Okay. Mastery of the emotions. Mastery of external water is the cup suit, right? Our feelings, how we express them. Okay. Interesting. Especially with his uh, dabbing his fingers in the cup here. Fascinating. Okay. Then we have the magician. Magician is manifesting, bringing things to life. Uh, could be another indication of pregnancy, right? Okay. Um, but yeah, the magician also means as above, so below. I have the tools I need to create what I need as she's looking at her hands, right? Bringing things to life. That also kind of ties into if this is more of a creative project for you or just a project in general, perhaps at work pile number ones. Okay, like we were talking about before, bringing something into into life. The Magician is a perfect card for that. We also have the Four of Wands reversed. Okay, so Four of Wands reversed um, can talk about a canceled celebration. It can also talk about um, a canceled event, something about cancellation at home. Okay, maybe there was a little bit of a setback in terms of the home previously. Uh, or a setback in a relationship. Sometimes this can also mean marriage. Okay, I don't want to scare you. I think this is past energy, but we'll see what else pops out before I say anything conclusive. That's the general interpretation of the four of wands reversed. Okay, then we have the ten of wands is the card of burdens. What is holding us down? What is weighing us down? Okay, like the whale being kind of held back here by the arms of this person. Okay. And last but not least, your last tarot card for the first section is the Queen of, I believe this is Cups, one second. Yes, Queen of Cups reversed, okay. So queens, unlike the kings, kings are external mastery, queens are internal mastery reversed. So uh, typically I would interpret the Queen of Cups reversed as being kind of confused as interpreting our emotions internally, okay. Not sure how to feel about something. Um, especially with the King of Cups having come up upright earlier, it almost speaks of feeling like maybe you, you might be able to externally communicate your emotions, but it's internally a little bit more confusing. Okay. About this topic. 
So maybe you're even professing emotions that you haven't even quite processed yet internally on this. Uh, I know it's a little bit confusing, but I'll talk about it more in conjunction with all the other cards here in a second. So um, to summarize so far, um, putting this all together, pile number ones for your first new thing coming into your life. There has been a sense in the past of, and I say this because you have the Coyote and Datura, which is the card of deceit. That was your pile leader, right? Um, you also have the Red Rose, which is hidden secrets. So something kind of being hidden to you, something being kind of unsure. Okay. Um, and then we also have security here with your Sacred Destiny. I'll unveil that just a little bit with our limited space here. There's a sense of deceit. There's a dissense or <clears throat> not, not intentional deceit, excuse me, but something being kind of not what it seems. Okay. And it created a little bit of insecurity in, in you recently, pile number one. So pay, perhaps maybe if there's been questions about pregnancy or, um, you know, will I get pregnant? Will I, yeah, what is the gender slash sex of the baby, right? Things like that. Um, will the baby be healthy? There might have been questions about that or perhaps there have been troubles in this area in the past for you, pile number ones, okay? Um, maybe things seemed like they were going okay, but mm, something didn't quite work out. I'll just put it that way, right? But what's new coming into your life is, uh, and that could have been more than just a pregnancy. It could have been, um, or different than a pregnancy, I should say. It could be like a project at work that uh, was kind of deceitful. Like uh, you thought it was going to work out. Like everything should have worked out on paper, right? But it's just like, mm, something didn't happen the way it was supposed to. Okay. Sometimes that just happens. It's out, completely out of our control. Sometimes it's just the universe taking the reins of fate out of our hands, right? But what's happening here, what's new entering your life is the delivery of something new in this area. So for some of you, like I said, that could be uh, a pregnancy, um, a very healthy, happy, you know, especially too with the tree, meaning like growth or health too and family, right? A happy pregnancy, healthy pregnancy, right? Okay. There could have been a little bit maybe confusion about, you know, like for example, when I was in my mother's womb, right? They did not know what gender I was because there, it was kind of confusing on the ultrasound. So my parents were kind of <laughs> debating between was I a boy, was I a girl? Um, that might be a similar situation you're in right now with your child. Okay. So if that is a question for you, pile number ones, feminine energy, girl. Okay. So uh, I would say that maybe is part of the new thing for you is if this is more of a pregnancy interpretation for you. Okay. Um, in terms of like a work project. Okay. There's something new coming in this area that will re revitalize the old project that didn't go so well, or it'll be like a new project that goes a lot smoother, okay? A lot more healthy here, especially with that oak tree, right? Um, and not only that, but there's a facet too with Regina we have over here, which like it says on the tin, she who instigates leadership, provocation, power. There is a sense of you stepping into more confidence, not only because of this card, but also you have the King of Cups here. King of Cups is like the mastery of the of the suit of emotions, right? Okay. The mastery of I am calm, I am composed, I know what my feelings are. Everything's just fine. Okay. Like you ever just meet those people in life that they can navigate the most stressful situations like very gracefully. Like that's kind of the feeling I'm getting from this, especially with the combination of the King of Cups here with Regina. Being a leader, handling this, you know, maybe you've learned a lot from this past project or maybe from this past experience with pregnancy or uh, whatever that might specifically apply to you in your situation as a generating pile number ones. But either way, uh, it'll go a lot better this time. There's new energy coming in this area. Okay. And it's a chance for you to step into your power more to exemplify more of this Regina energy of being a leader. I have power. I have control over this. I can guide this to fruition. Okay. That type of feeling, right? Um, and, and interpreting with your tarot cards, you know, uh, really good time for manifesting things. You know, like I said, could be pregnancy, could be a project at work, could be if this is a creative project, which, you know, um, creative projects can kind of be like a pregnancy of sorts, you know, a little bit more of a uh, a mental pregnancy, right? But um, bringing that to life there, manifesting as above, so below with the magician, I have the power in my hands and I have the tools that I need to do what I have to. Everything is already within me, okay? Um, 
things like that. I'm confident and calm with the King of Cups. All right. Um, there is a little bit of story. I think this is more about the backstory here with these three cards. Like I said, maybe a little bit of troubles at home with the Four of Wands reversed. Uh, a feeling of I am burdened with the Ten of Wands and then the Queen of Cups reversed, like I said before, is I'm, I am confused about my emotions inside. Maybe a little bit of despair. Okay, maybe you're a little confused. How do I feel about this? Why is the universe throwing this curveball at me? What's going on? Um, but the good news is, pile number ones, in any area of your life where there's been something, some sort a project or or could be like a pregnancy like I said something that you were trying to bring to fruition that didn't go well recently there might have been even like an, an element of insecurity because of it or maybe even if it was job related there was a feeling of insecurity in terms of actually like financial means okay maybe you worried about oh am I gonna lose my job over this or you know maybe even you you had lost a job and you felt like you know maybe you were let go more like kind of in a deceitful way or it wasn't very clear um, kind of came up out of the blue. Whatever this deceitful setback energy has been in your life recently, pile number ones, this reading is telling you that there's growth coming in this area. You will find the security you're looking for. There's a chance for stepping more into your power. Oh, there goes my pen. Sorry. I just knocked that over. Um, there is a chance for more stepping into your power and being more confident. And things manifesting the way that you intended them to this time, okay? Those burdens being released. Happiness in the home. Um, feeling more confident with your emotions here, right? Things like that, all right? Um, let's see if there's anything else I want to touch on before I move to the second new thing coming into your life here soon, pile number ones, okay? Yeah, definitely. Um, for those of you looking for children, very good sign, okay? Creative projects, very good sign things like that. Okay. All right, let's move on to the second section of your reading pile number ones. Awesome. That's always good to hear, right? Hearing that things are going to go better this time. So the new thing to summarize for that pile, um, or that first reading for your pile number ones is success after a time of struggle in an area where you were trying to bring something to life, metaphorically or not. Okay. And then let's grab your Lenormand and shuffle the deck here for your second section. And then I will clear the board. Alrighty. Yeah, definitely more of a, it's probably more related to your life lesson with this particular situation, pile number ones with the Regina stepping into your power, gaining confidence after a time of setback, right? Because that can ding your confidence, right? And then a spirit for my lovely pile number ones for their second new thing coming into their life. Can you give me three Lenormand cards, please? What's new coming into their life soon? Oh, and I forgot to mention this in the intro. I generally have asked for about three months ahead of the time you view this reading. So I would expect these things within the next three months. Forgot to mention that. I should have put that in the intro, but whoopsie, there we go. And then your tarot cards, spirit, five cards for the same purposes, please, for pile number ones. New things entering their life. Okay, let's see. One, two, definitely, oh, that one, yep, three, four, and I feel that one's calling your name there, pile number ones. Let's do that. Okay. All right, get our ducks in a row, as I always say. Let's look at your oracle cards first. Don't forget your coyote over here, your detour, moonflower. Moonflowers are so beautiful. All right, your L key. She who begins, primavera, launch, actualize, potential. Okay, another kind of perfect card for a new energy reading, right? Beginning something new, something beginning again. Okay, new growth. Very spring vibes, right? Gardening almost. Planting new seeds and they're actually growing, right? Um, botanical inspirations, your flower for this is Coreopsis tick seed. Okay. Always joyful is the meaning of this flower. And the quote is, write it on your heart that every day is the best day of the year. That was Ralph Waldo Emerson, I believe was a poet. Okay. Coreopsis tick seed, always joyful. So something about launching something new and maybe some joy in this area. Okay, that sounds good. Then your sacred destiny is leadership. You know, that's funny because we talked about Regina earlier. I'll grab that again. Look at that. Leadership. 
lots of leadership life lessons coming your way, pile number ones, okay? Both in, uh, both of these messages, I should say. Leadership, North Star, mm hmm is that Polaris? Uh, might be. I don't see the Little Dipper, but I'm going to just assume that's Polaris, the North Star. Being the North Star for others, okay? Maybe uh, this could be related to, through the example of what happens with your first message, you provide leadership for others in this way, paving the path, okay? Let's look at your Lenormand, though. We have the ship, a voyage or a journey. We have another tree, but this time it's the holly tree, okay? Very similar to the first tree, but can make a distinction with the interpretation. And then we have the ring, which is the promise or a bond, your word. Okay, reading this together in a sentence as Lenormand usually is, we have a journey of the growth of a promise or the health of a promise. Voyage or journey of the health of a promise. Okay, uh, intuitively, I don't know if you were promised something at work in terms of a promotion and it's and it felt like for a while it wasn't coming through or a new job of some sort hmm maybe even traveling for work that's what the ship can also mean we'll see what pops up with tarot cards so all right card one is we have the ten of wands again okay we have that I, you saw me shuffle burdens okay I am burdened. So another feeling of maybe something has been burdening you that's lifting is the new thing coming forward. We'll see what else pops out. We have the Knight of Wands reversed. Okay, Knights are the cards of taking action. Wands are confidence, charisma, creativity, things like that. Reversed, it's asking for more action in terms of your willpower, of your creativity, your confidence, okay? Then we have justice, uh, kind of like what it says on the tin. We have Mat from Egyptian mythology, Egyptian beliefs. Weighing the heart versus the feather. What is fair? Okay. Justice is blind. Mm -hmm. We have the wheel of fortune, karma. What goes up goes down and what goes down must come back up. Uh, your fortune, especially because this came out uh, upright, this is fortunes turning in a good way. Okay. So if you've been down on your luck in this area recently, pile number ones, it seems like this is finally going to kind of turn your way. And then another major arcana, we have the high priestess listening to ourselves. Okay, this is intuition. Um, I take confidence and I believe in what I am told in terms of spiritual intuition. Yes. Uh, so a lot of major arcana, I always say this in my readings, I see a lot of major arcana when a major life lesson is kind of involved with a reading for the person being read for, okay? So to summarize, the new thing number two for you, pile number ones, okay? There, um, hmm, how do I, how do I put this? One second. I'm gonna take a drink while I'm looking over this. There's something to do with fairness, with justice, and something that was promised to you, okay? Because you have the ring here and you have justice with Mott, okay? And it's something to do with stepping into a leadership role here. You have leadership with your polar bear here, right? Something happy with always joyful, the Coreopsis, okay? Um... Yeah, and then Primavera, launch actualized potential, she who begins. I think pile number ones, this is something to do with your career, all right? If you were kind of promised something in terms of your career and it's been looking bad for a while, like, I'm not sure they're going to hold out on their promise. I'm not sure justice is going to be, going to be delivered. In whatever way... Um, oh, what's a better way to put that? you thought a promise was going to be broken. You thought justice was not going to be delivered in terms of this new position of leadership, right? But what this reading is telling you, because with the sequence of tarot cards, we have like, there was a burden upon me. I didn't feel like I could take confident action with that Knight of Wands reversed, but justice will be served. Karma will turn in my favor. I just need to listen to myself. That's kind of your tarot reading in a summary right there, okay? This promise will be fulfilled, okay? Whether it's a new job, whether it's a new promotion at a current job, okay? 
And it's something that provides you more opportunities, not only to be a leader, like we even saw with your Regina earlier, but you have a leadership card right here with the polar bear, right? Something that brings you happiness with always joyful, the Coreopsis tick seed, right? Something that actually takes good advantage or uh, utilizes more proficiently your potential here with Primavera. Okay, that's how I would put that, right? Utilizes your potential more efficiently, okay? Um, I, it, it almost kind of feels like where you are right now isn't utilizing you very well. Uh, but whatever this new energy is, and I believe for most of you this is in career, okay? It's going to go a lot better. It's going to be a better fit for you, all right? It's actually going to take better use of your skills, okay? Uh, it's also going to have an element of justice of what is actually rightfully owed to you, karmically here because you did have the wheel of fortune right this is i mean this is i think it's like the three fates in greek greek mythology they had the string that they would cut right when someone died i mean that well that's that's morbid this is a positive reading but you know what i mean that's the depiction that this card talks about right um yes and i think deep down there is an intuition of i like you're pretty sure you're gonna get it but there still is that knocked confidence here with the knight of uh, wands reverse like you're like i'm not sure if i should take action with this i'm not sure if i should go for it i'm not sure if this promise is going to be held um but this is telling you that this new energy this new thing entering your life soon is the fulfillment of that promise justice being served and karma turning in your favor okay pile number ones that burden will be released um, have confidence, okay? Listen to your intuition deep down and know that justice will be served and fate will turn in your favor towards something that will let you utilize your skills more and let you be more of a leader than you were before, okay? There's a lot of leadership energy throughout both of your readings today. I think that's a major, like I said before, a major life lesson that's on your way, okay? learning to be a leader, giving the opportunity for being a leader, okay, and stepping into that. And I, I, I intuitively, I'm getting the sense that you're probably pretty, pretty good at it. Okay. Um, I think it's kind of meant for you. It's just maybe you haven't had the opportunity offered to you yet in your life. But this is part of the two new things that are coming your way is potentials for leadership, right? Potentials, I mean, even could be management, uh, maybe even being a leader of your own business maybe a position at the company that you're at currently or a promotion um, through another company, right? Where uh, you, you just have more say, more power, okay? More influence in deciding the direction of things. Could even mean a move here with the ship. The ship or the voyage means a journey usually with Lenormand, right? So like I said, reading in a sense is the journey or voyage of growth or health of a promise, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so that could literally mean, you know, maybe moving for a job. Okay. Um, things like that. Let's see if there's anything else I can glean before I sign off with you, pile number ones. Okay. So yeah, just to summarize both of your readings, uh, a lot of leadership energy, like I said before. Okay. Believe in yourself. I know I say that in a lot of my readings, um, but this opportunity, you know, when it comes up for you, take it. Okay. Um, cause I believe it's meant for you. All right. And then, uh, looking at your pile leader one last time, we have the coyote and Natura, which is the moonflower deceit, right? One second. I just want to make sure. Yeah. There's a lot of feelings of like, I was, I was tricked or could even be self deceit where you have a little bit of imposter syndrome where you think you're not good enough for it, but you are. Um, things like that. Blooming. That's another thing is moonflowers or detour. They bloom at night. So I, 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 what comes to my mind intuitively is like blooming and hardship. Okay. Blooming at night. It's, it's like, it's like you, you haven't, you've had the skill all along pile number once. It's just that you bloom. Cause okay. With the flower metaphor, right? Most flowers bloom during the day, right? Or they open during the day. Or like you think about like morning glories, which are actually in the moonflower family or vice versa, right? They open with the sun. That's when they shine, okay? Moonflowers are different, hence their name. They open at night, okay? And they attract moths, right? That's their pollinator. They bloom just a little bit differently than every other flower, okay? At a different time, okay? 
you know, maybe you've been feeling like you've been a little bit slower than other people in terms of progression in your life, okay? Maybe you've been feeling like, you know, I, I feel like I just don't shine. I, and it's But it's not you, pile number ones. It's just that you bloom differently than other people do, okay? You bloom, or you will bloom with this change here coming, this new thing coming in your life. You'll bloom in ways you didn't expect because... I think for a while you thought it, it was a you problem, but really what it was was just that wasn't your place to bloom. You're a moonflower. You bloom this way, whereas maybe most people bloom the other way, like daytime flowers usually do. That's the metaphor I'm, I'm being intuitively told here with that, with the moonflower, the Totora, right? Okay. So just keep that in mind. If you've been having a little bit of knocked confidence here, it's not you. It's just that maybe you weren't planted in the right place to grow the best way you could. But what's changing is you are going to be planted in the right place to bloom the way you most beautifully can with the skills that you have, okay? That's how I would summarize that for you. So uh, pile number ones, as always, I hope that reading was helpful for you. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope to see you in the next reading. Bye. Hello there, my lovely pile number twos. Welcome to your pick a card reading today on the topic of what new things will enter your life soon. As I discussed in the intro, this will be two readings in one. We'll talk about one new thing in one section and another new thing in another section. And I forgot to mention in the intro, this is generally, I ask Spirit to predict out to three months from the time you view this video. Okay. So soon means three months. All right. So let's split our cards into the different readings for today. We have the pile leader, as you recall, you picked the owl and hop. We have wisdom. So I always associate owls with Athena being a tactician, being wise, seeing things from different angles. Like owls always kind of, they can turn their head all the way around, right? Also being night seeing or nocturnal animals, right? Being very wise. All right, we'll set your pile leader over here to the left, as always, next to the pine cone. Split your oracle cards into the two different readings. I'll set these down here with me. And then let's draw your Lenormand and tarot cards. So spirit for my pile number two is for their first new thing entering your, their life. Can you give me three cards, please? What new thing is entering their life? What is the first reading you would like to give them today? Okay, let's see. Two and three. Same thing with tarot. Five cards, please, for the same reading. What new thing is entering their life? What's going on in pile two's life soon? Okay, what's going on? One, two, three, uh, four, and then I'm feeling one in the back here. Maybe that one, five. Okay, let's unveil this together, pile number twos. Oracle cards first, as always. You have your botanical inspirations, flower. We have the snapdragon. Okay, graciousness and benevolence. No act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted by Aesop. Okay, snapdragons. No act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. Hmm, I know we didn't pick out your other cards yet, but I'm feeling intuitively there's something you're going to be thanked for you didn't think you were going to be thanked for, or that's going to be returned to you in a way that you didn't expect, but let's see what else pops out before I get too far in the weeds. Uh, she Who Whispers, Konskia, I believe is how you pronounce that, Secrets, Confidant, Confessions, from the Elki Oracle. Something secretive, yeah, it's like you didn't expect it. Something very kind of whispery, kind of like, it's on the wings, but it's quiet, okay? All right, let's see what else pops out for you. Your sacred destiny is taking risks. Taking risks. Okay. Interesting. We'll see what else pops out, but we have a, it looks like a hawk flying from a, I believe that's a butte. That's what it's called. Plateau. Butte. Something like that. All right. Your Lenormand is, we have the man or the Lord, the whip or the broom, and then we have the bear. Okay. So reading this all in a sentence for you as Lenormand traditionally is red pile number twos. Okay. Um, a man 
with a sharp tongue that is strong. Okay, that can be one interpretation. Uh, the whip can also mean someone that's not very kind with their words. Sometimes the bear can also mean someone that's just like strong or like kind of burly in their manner, right? Not even just physically, but could also mean a burly man, right? For masculine energy. Something to do with a man with a sharp tongue that is strong, okay, is how I would interpret that for you. Uh, the whip can also mean, or the broom can also mean repetition, right? Something done repetitively. So a man that is repetitively strong. We'll see what else pops out, though, before I say everything on that. But that's how I would interpret that Lenormand reading for you. Interesting. Okay. And like I said, it's like something secretive. Something that you might be thanked for that you didn't expect to be. Mm. Okay, your tarot cards are the two of pentacles balancing things. Weighing different things. Balance. Interesting. Taking risks too. Fascinating. All right, we have the King of Cups reversed. External mastery of emotions, but reversed. It's lacking that, so we're asking for more of it. So um, how I'd interpret that, I would say feeling like we can't express ourselves in some way. Okay. Maybe that has to do with the man, with the way he speaks, right? Or masculine energy, how they speak, right? We have the Magician Reversed. Okay, you're actually getting a lot of cards. Pile number one's dead. Uh, magician Reversed is, I, I feel like I don't have what I need to do what I need to do. That's the energy of that card reversed, okay? Interesting. Um, and then we have the Page of Swords. Exploring new thoughts, exploring new ways of thinking. Uh, pages are apprentices, so they're exploring, they're learning. Okay. New way of thinking, all right. <clears throat> Excuse me. And last but not least, we have the that is the seven of wands. Okay, seven of wands uh, is usually like I feel like I have to defend myself. Okay. I feel like I'm on top, and there's a bunch of people trying to get at me. Okay, or I feel like everything's against me. That's kind of another way of interpreting the seven of wands, especially reversed, right? feel like I'm being beaten down. Okay. Uh, so pile number two. Uh, there's energy coming in here where there is someone involved with this situation that has been kind of wearing you down, not only because of the seven of wands reversed, right? But also like the magician reversed too is feeling like I am not being given what I need to actually do something, right? Uh, I think it's a masculine energy, okay, because of the Lettermond reading here. A um, man who is repetitively strong, a man who has a strong tongue, okay, who speaks maybe not in a nice, not so nice way, but what is happening here is the new thing coming into your life pile number two. Is that was like kind of the old energy leading up to what I'm going to be doing for, they're telling you as the reading what's the new energy, right, is... Something's coming that will right this issue with this man or masculine energy, okay? Something is coming that will bring things back into balance here, like with that two of pentacles, okay? I intuitively thought it might be a manager of yours that isn't so nice, someone with power over you, okay? Whoever it is, though... For most of you, like I said, I think it's masculine energy because of that card. Something is coming secretively or more quietly that not only will thank you or repay you back for having put up with this energy, <laughs> uh, to put it lightly, um, it also will remove this from your life, this energy of this person, okay? Okay. This not so nice energy. So that's the new thing is coming into your life pile number two is, is this energy being gotten rid of in a way you're not expecting more secretive there with Conscarit. And in a way that repays you maybe, maybe just karmically, but also maybe combination karmically and actually physically, tangibly in your life repays you for having put up with this. So for example, like, let's say, um, 
maybe this actually is a manager at your work that isn't so nice, right? A masculine manager that's kind of, you know, uh, maybe he's a butthead, right? <laughs> Just to put it lightly, right? <laughs> For you, you, YouTube version of butthead, right? Um, and the repayment might be he gets let go because his being a butthead at work gets caught and maybe you get his job. Okay. That's something as an example of what I'm seeing, like something kind of quiet, like maybe they're kind of hiding that they're, they're the people above him that are making this decision to let him go, um, are kind of being quiet about it. It's kind of in the wings. They're kind of keeping it hush hush. Right. But it is coming. Okay. And that will remove the energy from your life of, I don't feel like I have the tools I need. I don't feel like I can express myself emotionally with this King of Cups reverse, right? I feel like everyone's trying to, you know, beat back up at me, right? With that Seven of Wands reversed, okay? Um, it'll bring balance, okay? It'll remove these elements of frustration, right? Um, and then the Page of Swords is fascinating because the Page of Swords, like I said, is the, they're the apprentices of their suit. And swords are air, which is the way we think, the way we speak, right? Maybe it'll allow you a new culture in this area. Uh, you know, let's say it is a job, like a new culture at this job or this department you work in, perhaps, right? Where it's it feels like completely different because you're like, I can actually speak the way that I want to speak. I can actually say the things that I need to say. I don't have this oppressive force beating down on me and other people around me into submission, into not saying things, right? So, um, I think the reason why this happens is because he takes a risk, hence taking risks, right? Or this masculine energy takes risks that get them caught in what they've been doing. So the new energy for you, pile number two, excuse me while I adjust in my chair if you hear any squeakies, right? The new energy for you, pile number two is with this is, uh, the butthead, <laughs> I'll put it lightly, right? Is going and better energy, better culture, better ways of thinking, better ways of expressing oneself are going to be allowed after this negative energy is removed from this situation, okay? You're not going to expect it, hence Konskia, right? Whispers, confessions, secrets, right? Kind of hush-hush right now, okay? Um, but you're... I mean, look at your Snapdragon graciousness. You've been gracious. You've been patient, Okay. And that will finally be rewarded for you for having put up with this, okay? Um, maybe even, you know, like it says here, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted, right? Maybe it was even something that you did, or will will do soon, that will be the trigger effect of getting this negative energy removed from this situation. So, the new thing entering your life with this first reading pile, number two, is... is uh, yes, the butt head will be removed. <laughs> so, hey, good news. Uh, no one likes having butt heads around, right? As I put it for YouTube terms, you know what I really mean, but I'll say butt head for now. Um, <laughs> always fantastic to get rid of that, especially because, you know, whenever you're in a workplace or it could, could be more than just a workplace or something different, but whenever you're in a situation where there is nasty energy like that, nothing is constructive. No one's happy. Nothing's getting done in a way that people are actually like satisfied, right? Um, so it'll just open up a lot of new avenues for success, for more openness, more happiness in general for people, everyone involved, but you especially pile number two. So your patience and your, your graciousness, let's say, will be rewarded. Okay. So expect that within the next three months, like I said, in the intro of your, of your reading. Okay. All right. Let's go to, uh, your second reading. All right. What other new thing is entering your life? So uh, to summarize, uh, there's a butthead being removed from your life. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I was like putting humor in my tarot readings, but let's clear the board for you and some shuffle your cards, right? All right, we'll shuffle Lettermon first. All right, spirit for pile number twos. Could you give me three cards explaining the second new thing that will enter their life? Three cards, please. Okay, I'm still laughing about butthead because sometimes I'm mentally 12, you know. <laughs> All right, you might have heard the audio cut out for a second because I accidentally stopped my recording there for a second. So if you hear it blip out, that's why. <clears throat> okay. 
Spirit, for my lovely pile number two, could you give me five cards explaining the new thing entering their life? Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then your oracle cards. So let's get our ducks in a row here. Okay, L key. We have she who persists, Jocelyn. Perspective, defiant, persistent. Okay. Persisting. Interesting. Your botanical inspiration's flower is the magnolia. Nobility and self-esteem. There's nothing noble in being superior to your fellow men. True nobility lies in being superior to your former self. That was from Ernest Hemingway. Nobility and self-esteem persisting. Okay, let's see. There's a theme popping out here. Your sacred destiny is gateway. Okay, on the cusp of something new. Perfect for, you know, new things reading, right? Uh, specifically with the unicorn, I always think of innocence, right? A lot of, like, uh, the color white imagery here, too, that kind of speaks of, like, you know, like, purity and innocence, right? We have the unicorn. Magnolias are white. Um, your Jocelyn has, like, a white head wrap on her head. Mm-hmm. Innocence in some way. Interesting. Okay, let's look at your Lenormand that popped out. Okay. We have the snake, renewal. Uh, this is the shedding snake specifically in this deck. Renewal, rebirth, shedding our skin for something new. We have the fox being clever, sometimes being deceitful, it can mean. Um, and then we also have the sun, which is uh, bringing clarity or happiness to something. So reading this in a sentence like I traditionally read Lenormand, I would say shedding deceit for clarity or shedding trickery for clarity. Okay. Shutting deceit or trickery for clarity. Something becoming pure again. Okay, with the other cards popping out. Thanks to your persistence. And then your tarot. Let's see what we say. Yeah. We have judgment reversed. Okay, a judgment typically is about moving into a new phase of something. Reversed, it can mean we're kind of stuck in one phase, but this could be past energy. We'll see what pops out. Okay. Um... Yeah, a lot of that black and white imagery again. Like, we have the angel wings with white here. Like, her angel wings are white. Uh, it looks like she's actually a Valkyrie, perhaps. Um, and then we have, like, the darker figures down here. Oh, interesting. Maybe it's not so black and white. All right, and then we have the Fool. Okay, another major arcana. The Fool is a new beginning. Yes, a lot of innocence energy here. Uh, the Fool is, like, the beginning of the tarot deck, literally. It's like, I started out on my journey. Uh, she's got her shoes untied even. She's so new at this. <laughs> she's just having fun going off into the sunset, right? All right, we have the Eight of Swords reversed, freeing ourselves from feeling trapped. I can fly free now. Okay. Then we have the King of Wands. I'm confident. I am strong. I am charismatic. I externally manifest my passion and willpower. Strongly. Mm -hmm. Then we have the this is the Eight of Pentacles reversed. Okay. Um, sometimes the Eight of Pentacles can mean we put a lot of work into something and we didn't quite get the fruition out of it that we thought, or maybe we're putting too much work into something when we don't have to, or it can sometimes even mean um, something being less work than we thought it would be. Okay. So we'll see what else. Um, we kind of interpret everything together before I, I say that conclusively. But that's traditionally what that means reversed, okay? So pile number twos. I'm seeing, like I said, there's a theme here of, like, innocence and purity of newness, okay? Not just because of a lot of the black and white imagery here. But, I mean, you even have the sun too, right? And the shedding snake is like rebirth, okay? It's like a rebirth of some sort. What this is specifically for you, like I said with Lenormand, is the shedding of trickery for clarity. There's something in your life that's been kind of deceitful or something that's been kind of unclear that's going to finally become clear and bring you joy, okay? I think for you, pile number twos, it's something you've been working at for a long time. 
and maybe you've even been doubting yourself, hence the theme of nobility and self-esteem. Okay, you're like, I kind of my confidence being is being dinged here. I'm not sure. You know, am I just bad at this? You know, am I not good at this? Um, but you persisted anyways with Jocelyn and, and or you're being encouraged to continue to persist, right? I am defiant. I am persistent. I keep going, right? And this new beginning will come after the deceit is shed and clarity and happiness is brought out. Specifically in combination with your tarot cards to pile number twos. Um, yeah, like I said, the judgment is like, I feel like I can't move on into this new phase then we move into the new phase with the fool finally we've gotten over that i am free with the eight of swords reversed i am confident i don't have to work as hard what this is for you pile number two is i am pretty sure this is self-deceit at work here okay i think you there's some part of you that feels like you could never move beyond something you felt like I would never get over this thing. You felt like I would never persist. I would never get to where I'm supposed to go. Okay. Maybe you've been feeling stagnant in this area for a long time. Um, That'll be the, kind of the indicators to what this specifically is talking about for you as a general reading pile number twos. But whatever it is, the new thing coming into your life is you're right on the precipice of that gateway here with the unicorn we talked about. Literally, it says gateway, right? You're on, you're on the precipice of that portal, just about to step in. Your, uh, I like to use a lot of writing metaphors in my tarot readings. Um, as I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of writing stuff. It's one of my interests, right? But, you know, because humanity in general, we love stories. It's, you know, the reason we love stories is because it reflects our own personal struggles, okay? Uh, it's like catharsis, I think, is a good word for that, right? This is the part of the story for you, pile number two, is where... You're the hero that's gotten the call, okay? You've been in one place for a long time, all right? You've been stuck. And all of a sudden, there's an inciting incident, and it calls you, and you're just about to step on that new adventure, that new journey into this new phase of life here, especially with Judgment Reverse next to the Fool, okay? This, I mean, to use like a... a, a actual story example this is uh let's see I, I like to use harry potter a lot because a lot of people know the story of harry potter right um this is harry potter uh i've been stuck with the dursleys i believe was the name of his adopted family or his cousin's family right aunt and uncle right i've been stuck in the cupboard under the stairs uh this kind of sucks uh, i'm not very happy here right and then he gets his letter to Hogwarts and he's like, well, heck yeah, I'm going with Hagrid, right? Like, <laughs> this is kind of the part I'm seeing here for you, pile number two. So, okay. You're, you're on the precipice of that change. And I think really what it was is not so much something external that needed to be changed to get you moving in this direction. It was something about yourself in terms of being more confident, okay? Believing in yourself. I know I say that in my tarot readings a lot, but a lot of people in our lives no matter what, we struggle with that. A lot of what holds us back is we just don't believe that we can take that step, okay? Half of taking the step is believing we can move our foot, okay? So believe that that letter is coming from Hogwarts, okay? It's coming. You're not going to be stuck here forever, pile number two, okay? Or another example is, um, uh, what's another good story that a lot of people are familiar with? Uh, I like to use Disney movies a lot because that's kind of what I'm familiar with. Uh, what's a good one? I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm blanking for some reason. I'm thinking of Frozen for some reason. Uh, Frozen is... Uh, the inciting incident is, well, basically uh, Elsa running away from the castle, right? Or the, from the estate, right? And uh, Anna have to, having to go after her, right? There's a new call to adventure. That's what this is. And you're right on the precipice of discovering, okay, I can step out. I can move forward. I am on the precipice of this portal, okay? I'll shed the deceit of believing in, of or of not believing in myself enough to bring joy and clarity, okay? It's almost like a new you because of all of this, this uh, white, like, uh, like purity, innocence energy here. Like a new self, okay? 
So to summarize pile number two is this new thing entering your life with a second reading is almost like a new self because of the transition of yourself from the precipice of stagnancy into new, a new journey and becoming yourself anew, okay, because of the gaining of confidence, all right? That type of thing. I'm free. I'm not stuck. Uh, I feel like I can move forward. I'm confident. I'm happy. And I don't have to work as hard as I thought I did just to be good enough, okay? I was good enough all along. I mean, that's another thing that happens in stories, too, with a lot of heroes, is they don't believe in themselves, but really what they were looking for, they had all along. That's that's you in this this story, specifically pile number two is okay. So that's what I would say for your second reading. If you've been feeling stagnant in your life in a particular area, this is going to change, okay? Because something's coming along that will make you shed disbelief in yourself, gain self-esteem, and feel like a new you because of this, okay? That type of thing. All right. So pile number two is, as always, I hope that reading was helpful for you. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Good luck on your new journey. And I hope to see you in the next reading. Bye. Hello there, my lovely pile number threes. Welcome to your pick a card reading today on the topic of what new things will enter your life soon. As I described in the intro, this will be kind of a two in one reading. We'll have section one will be one new thing. Section two will be another new thing. And I didn't say this in the intro, but just to describe the timing on this, I am asking Spirit to kind of predict out to three months from the time you view this video. So soon means three months to summarize, right? So, uh, as you recall, the card used to pick your pile was the quail and gooseberry, which means anticipation. Being careful, looking towards the future, looking around, making sure everything is safe before we venture out. It's kind of how I would describe that card, right? Okay, especially because quails like to hide in low foliage, make sure that they're safe before they run out. All right, so I'll put your pile leader over here by the pine cone as always. Split your reading into the two different sections here. Let's see, make sure all the cards are in a row. Yep, okay, so that's section one. I'll talk about these later with section two. And let's pull your cards. Spirit for my pile number three is, could you give me three cards explaining the first new thing that will enter their life? Three Lenormand cards, please. Okay, one, two, and I'm gonna pull that one, three. Same thing with tarot, five cards for my pile three is for the new thing entering their life. Five, please. All right, one, two, Three, four, and that one's calling her name right there. Five. Okay, my lovely pile number three. Get the ducks in a row, as I always say. My, my little goofy saying I like to say. I have a lot of those. <laughs> I'm corny, what can I say? All right, your botanical inspirations for your reading number one is Sweet William, also often known as Dianthus, right? Gallantry, grant me a single smile. The quote is, Sweet William Small has form and aspect bright, like that sweet flower that yields great Jove delight by Abraham Cowley. Grant me a single smile. Very cute. We'll see what else pops out with your other cards before I interpret that further. We have your L key is, uh, and I always probably butcher the pronunciation, Entrante. I think it's French. Correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone in the comments knows better, but uh, she who enfolds swathe embrace self-care. Okay. Kind of getting a bit of a theme here. We'll see what else pops out before I say conclusively, of course, as I always say. Interesting. Hmm. Actually, I always set the L key down here to the right. Put her down here in Trante, or however you pronounce that. Your sacred destiny is diligence. Okay. Doing due diligence, being hard at work, being responsible. Mm, okay. And your Lenormand, reading it in a sentence like I always like to do. We have the anchor, we have the lily, and we have the boy or the child. 
as it's known in most decks. Uh, yes, reading in a sentence, stability. Uh, the lily can sometimes mean an elderly family member or purity, okay? Uh, it can also mean something uh, sexual, okay? See what else pops out? And then the boy or the child is either like innocence or like youthfulness, okay? So reading in a sentence, stability of pure innocence, stability of pure youthfulness, Maybe something in your life coming along that'll make you feel young again is kind of how I would interpret that in a more conclusive way. Especially with the lily next to the child, I always think of like uh, like purity or innocence, right? Interesting. Maybe time for play here can also be an interpretation of the child, right? I think... I know your tarot cards aren't on the deck yet, or the desk yet, pile number threes, but I think there's a time for more free time and self-care and play coming your way. Is how I would summarize what I've seen so far, but we'll see what else pops out. Card number one, we have three of swords reversed. Fantastic card to get moving on from pain. Okay, great card to get in reverse. Moving on from pain. Knight of Wands, taking action with our confidence, our creativity, or our willpower. Also a fantastic card to get. Okay. Number three, we have the Hanged Man reversed. Um, sometimes can mean um, struggling with seeing things from a new perspective. Okay. Uh, intuitively, I'm getting the sense maybe this change will be kind of mentally hard for you, even if it's good for you. Okay. Maybe a little bit of a perspective shift. Three of Pentacles reversed can mean a lack of teamwork or doing something alone. Okay. And last but not least, we have the Ten of Cups. Happily ever after emotional fulfillment. I am emotionally happy. Sometimes can mean a relationship card. Positively. All right, pile number three is a uh, message of new thing entering your life soon. Uh, number one, okay. There's an aspect of your life where you've been very diligent. You've been very responsible. However, it's been granting you a lot of, uh, I don't want to say pain. Uh, I want to say more like struggle, stress perhaps is a better word to say. I think you've been burning out. I think you've been having some struggles with keeping up with your passion in this area. Could be potentially, uh, potentially like a job where you're just like, I just, let's just ain't my jam anymore, man. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know if I like this, right? And the new thing entering your life, though, is I, I don't know if it's because you leave this job. I don't know if it's because you find another one that allows you more free time, but whatever it is, pile number three is the new energy coming in is a time of less stress, a time of more play, okay, where the ability or the time you have to play and enjoy yourself and take some self-care here with Enchante, like it's a suave embrace, self-care, right, and folds, right? It's more, I don't know if it's like you, you're currently in a position where timing is really inconsistent. Maybe you're on call a lot, that type of thing. But whatever it is that's kind of unclear and stressing you out right now and kind of shaky and it's inconsistent, that's going to move into a time of more consistency of things are going to be more expected and it's going to free you up for more time to actually enjoy life. Moving on from pain with the Three of Swords reversed, okay? It might be a little bit of a mental shift first. That's what I was saying before with the Hanged Man. Um, I, I know a lot of people uh, I've met before where they get to a time in their life where they're not working as hard and it bugs the crap out of them because they're like, they're so used to that that rigmarole that they're so used to that, that treadmill run of like, I gotta work, I gotta work, I gotta work, I gotta grind, right? That when they shift from a time of more peace, there's like, sometimes there can be feelings of guilt. Um, you know, I've struggled with, with this in my own personal life of, of taking time off from a career before. Uh, 
you feel guilt. You feel like, well, should I really take this time off? You know, really, sh should I really spend this money to do something else or, or actually enjoy life a little bit more, right? Um, but what Spirit is saying for you, pile number three, is, is yes. Take that time off. Yes, move to that job that allows you more time to actually enjoy being here on Earth, okay? Life doesn't always have to be about how much blood you can beat out of a stone, aka metaphorically how much work you can beat out of yourself, right? Life is also about joy. Life's also about pleasure. Life's also about, I mean, if you've ever watched near-death experiences, uh, ex videos from people that have had those, or even people that have had spiritual experiences in general with, um, uh, I, like, I think of, I've never done this myself, but uh, people I've heard have, like, had spiritual journeys with, like, ayahuasca, right? The purpose of life, often repeated, is love, okay? Joy. Happiness. Yes, there are lessons to be learned, okay? Life isn't sunshine and roses all the time, as we all very intimately know. <laughs> but life doesn't always have to be beating blood out of a stone, okay? It doesn't have to be grind, 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 grind. I'm tired and I'm a shell of myself, okay? You have to take time for yourself, pile number eight threes, okay? And that's what this new thing entering your life in is, or is, is an opportunity to indulge in more play. Indulge in more free time. Indulge in a mental shift of, I don't have to be grinding myself to dust every single day, okay? Um, maybe it's even a little bit more energy of going it alone. Could be even like this newness is like you're shifting from like a typical corporate job to maybe something more individually that you're passionate about you're doing on your own. Uh, especially here with the Knight of Wands. Wands are like creative energy, right? Maybe something more attuned to you, who you are creatively in your hobbies or something that you maybe thought you could turn, you know, from a hobby into a business, right? Um, but whatever it is, pile number three is it will bring you emotional fulfillment here with the Ten of Cups. This is a fantastic card to get in terms of happily ever after is a fantastic way to summarize Ten of Cups, right? I'm happy. Moving on from pain, taking action with our passions, changing the way we think of things mentally, going it alone, or in a different way, towards emotional fulfillment. Stability of the purity of play or innocence, right? With the Lenormand cards, okay? You've been responsible. Knowing you, pile number three is from this reading. You'll have done everything right to prepare for this time. What Spirit is saying is enjoy this new energy of more time for yourself, okay? It could even be maybe retirement is looming. Maybe you kind of struggle with the idea of retirement, pile number three is... Uh, Spirit is saying don't, okay? <laughs> I mean, easier said than done, of course, but it's important to partake in self-care, and the new thing coming is time for that self-care, okay? So there might be a little bit of a struggle with the mental shift, but other than that, it's going to be a pretty dang good time here with that Ten of Cups pile number three is okay. A time for more rest, a time for more play, a time for more self-care. So that's number one, the new thing entering your life is a time opportunity for this, okay? So let's get to your reading number two, my lovely pile number threes. Shuffle our cards here. It's always a fantastic message to give, right? Yeah, and two, the quill and gooseberry. Um, this particular card also means preparing for the future. I think if you're worried about like, you know, oh, well, I can't take that time off or I can't do this new thing that brings a lot more play and enjoyment in my life. If you're worried about like, oh, I haven't planned enough for that, Spirit is saying that you've planned enough just fine. Everything will be fine. Okay. So if there's any doubt of if I'm if I, like, are you ready for this? I, I would put that doubt out of your mind pile number three. So, okay. <clears throat> That's how I would summarize that for you. So, all right, let's get on to reading number two. Spirit for my lovely pile number three is could you tell me the next new thing entering their life with three Lenormand cards, please? What is the second message you would like to have been sent or here today? One, two, and a three. Okay. And then same thing with tarot. Shuffle the deck. Okay, five cards, please. Spirit for the new thing entering pile three's life. 
the second new thing, I should say. So we already talked about one. So a time for play was pile number, or excuse me, reading number one. <clears throat> one, two, three, four, and let's do five there. Okay. All right, my lovelies. Get the ducks in a row. Okay. Oracle cards. He received uh, Audaz. I believe is how you pronounce that. She who resists. Fearless, justified, resistant. I resist. I'm justified. Okay. A little bit of freedom fighter energy there. Okay. We have the Botanical Inspirations card. Your flower was Gloxinia. Love at first sight and proud spirit kind of ties in with Audaz, she who resists. I'm fearless. When I saw you, I fell in love and you smiled because you knew by William Shakespeare. Okay, proud spirit and love at first sight. All right, let's see what else pops out. Your sacred destiny for today is thriving. Okay, not just living, but thriving. Hmm. Not just living, but thriving. I succeed. I'm enjoying life, right? Your letter mond, read in a sentence here, we have the coffin or the crypt, which means the end of something. We have the owls, and we also have the birds. So actually, um, this is uniquely the way that I read this letter mond deck. There are different variations in this deck for the same cards. You can see they're both number 12. And the birds typically mean communication, okay? So reading this all together in a sentence, um, so sometimes it calls me gossip. So the end of gossip communicated. Okay. Sometimes it can also mean nervous energy. So the end of nervous communication. Let's see what else pops out before I interpret that fully for you. But yes, something with chattiness or gossip or nervousness ending okay all right and then your tarot cards we have number one the page of swords reversed asking for more exploration in terms of the way we think or the way we th say things okay we have the queen of wands internal mastery of i am confident my creativity Internal knowing of I am good enough sometimes is how I interpret the Queen of Wands upright. Okay. We have the Six of Swords. I'm moving on. I'm on a boat and I'm on my way somewhere better to greener pastures. Okay. I'm fording my way to something better. Okay. We have the oh, Three of Pentacles reversed, and you saw me shuffle these, right? We have this again. Three of Pentacles reversed is about, like, going it alone. Okay. Lack of teamwork. Okay. And then, last but not least, we have Temperance reversed. Okay. Temperance reversed sometimes can mean a lack of balance, a lack of moderation. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Summarizing this for you, pile number three is, let me see, I'm going to take a drink actually before I say anything while I look over your cards. Make sure my voice keeps, is nice and wetted, right? And I mean that is a pun in both ways. <laughs> okay, pile number three is, let's see, we have resisting, thriving, I think of nervousness. Huh, that's fascinating. So, pile number threes. I think this particular reading for you is not so much an external new thing. I think this is a shift internally for you that's coming, okay? I did see this with another pile today. I believe that pile number two had something similar. So, this has come out with other readings uh, but basically what it, to summarize is there's some sort of shift within yourself on the way that's positive I'm seeing, okay? And I say that because we have a lot of cards about endings and moving on with the Six of Swords here, okay? I think... 
I almost feel like it's it's a new way of living where you're still yourself in terms of being true to who you actually are. I don't know if you've had some issues in the recent past with people trying to change your perspectives on things, people trying to change the way you view yourself, people trying to change the way that you want to live your life, okay? What's happening here is is a newness of self in the way of being yourself, being true to who you were all along. I say that because you have audacity who resists, fearless, justified, resistant. This is someone who does not bend their will, okay? This is someone who says no, okay? <laughs> this is someone who says, I have a dagger. I mean, you can see in her hand here, I have a dagger. And if you try to change me, I will, will not literally, you know, hurt someone. But you know what I mean, right? Fearless resistance. Okay. Like I said, freedom fighter. Um, so the newness for you, pile number three, is, is I think in the past you were nervous to say no to this person or whatever is trying to influence you. It could also be more than just a person. It could be society in general, right? You were nervous about it. You were nervous of saying no. You didn't believe in yourself enough in terms of, well, oh, I don't know, maybe they're right or maybe society is right. That is ending here with the crypt or the coffin. The ending of nervous communication, okay? I resist what is trying to be changed about myself. And I'm being true to myself. And by being true to myself, I'm becoming a new person who is confident, okay? I'm becoming a queen of wands. I'm confident internally about who I am. I don't have to change, okay? I don't have to become something new. Which, ironically, though, the self-fulfilling prophecy is you are becoming something new in that you're becoming a more confident version of who you were all along by being true to yourself, okay? Proud spirit, okay? Um, I think it might be something to do with the way that living life is interpreted or the way that thriving is interpreted, hence your thriving card here. You know, there's a lot of ideas that other people will try to put in our heads about, and, and society in general, about what what is what does life look like? What life should be? What is actually thriving, right? Um, you know, stereotypically, at least, you know, in uh, my culture here in the West, right? The idea of thriving is... You know, I need this expensive house. I need this nice car. I need this kind of job. I need to make this kind of money. I need to look this way. I got to talk this way. I got to have this partner. I have to be in a relationship or that's, you know, kind of a different version of it. But yeah, I have to be in a relationship to be fulfilled. I have to have this, 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 that. I got to buy that. I got to do this. I got to look like this. Those types of feelings. Okay. But that isn't actually thriving. Okay. Because when we sit down and we ask ourselves, what is it that we actually want from life? What would actually make us feel like we're thriving and not just breathing and, and eating and sleeping, right? Okay. Oftentimes, it's different than what other people want, you know. Some people, maybe they really do want a mansion, okay. And if that's your thing, you go go for it, okay. <laughs> that's your goal then. Some people would be happy with just a one-room little log cabin in the woods, okay? Myself included with that. I love cabins, right? Um, I'm an outdoorsy person, of course, but, you know, that's that's what thriving looks like to me is just a place to keep the rain out of my soup and a place to put my head at night, okay? More humble, you know? Or, yeah, maybe you reach for the stars and you're like, I want a mansion. I want my mansion and I want my silver curtains and I want my silk carpets or my silk pillowcases, things like that, you know? <laughs> but what matters is, though, is that that's actually your definition of thriving. It's not what society says is you thriving, okay? You know, maybe your thriving isn't even having a home at all. Maybe your thriving is I'm on the road in an RV or a car, right? You know, people that do the travel life, right? Or I'm sorry, nomadic life, right? Maybe a better term for it, right? That type of thing, okay? So what the shift is, this new thing in your life, pile number three, is, is reinterpreting by leaning more into the Page of Swords reversed energy. Exploring how you actually think about things, how you internally feel about things. Moving past that 
going it on your own, which is kind of a theme here. We have that three of pentacles reversed in both readings, right? And bringing more balance to your life, okay? Because it's what you actually want. Not being nervous to say no to other people trying to influence us or society influencing us or social media influencing us, right? Being proud and resisting and saying, no, that's not what life looks like for me. So that's, you know, to summarize pile threes, that's the new energy for you is becoming anew by not changing who you are and being who you were all along, which I know sounds like, I don't know, would you call that an oxymoron? Hmm? Irony, but that type of energy, okay? So if you've been worrying recently over, you know, where you are at in life, you've been worrying over what do I actually want in life, you've been worrying over other people saying things to you that may, may have dinged your confidence in terms of, you know, you know, maybe someone said to you, well, why, why don't you have this thing by this age? Or you know, maybe someone said to you, well, you know, you should do your life this way. And maybe that kind of knocked your confidence a bit because you're like, eh, well, maybe they're right. You know, maybe it's kind of a lack of self-esteem in this area is to summarize that pile number threes. But the new energy is cutting that, uh, well, just, yeah, uh, I'll say it bluntly, cutting that crap on, on their end, not your end, or society's end. Not being nervous about being yourself and moving forward into a brighter future where the way you live, the way that you specifically want to thrive is in tune with your actual everyday life and your actions, okay? Moving forward with that Six of Swords energy, okay? Um, yes, moving away more independently with that Three of Pentacles reversed, and being that queen of wands that says, I know who I am and I'm happy about it. I'm confident about it internally, okay? I resist what society or other people tell me. And I thrive because I'm in tune with who I am, okay? Proud spirit. Okay? That type of thing. So, pile number three. As always, I hope that reading was helpful for you. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Be confident in who you are. Live life the way that you want to live, okay? And I hope to see you in the next reading, all right? Bye.